Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan and today what I'm going to show you is how to build a client editable file library for your WordPress website using Oxygen and advanced custom fields. So this actually came up to me as a real uh, request from one of my clients. They needed to be able to add and edit files to their website and they are a private school. The issue was that they didn't want to have to wait the turnaround time for me or whoever's managing the website to, to um, go in and add and edit files for them. So what I was able to do is use the oxygen repeater element as well as the advanced custom fields pro repeater to kind of build out this file library and they can go into the actual page that we've called file library and add and edit files. So inside the WordPress visual editor, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how to set all this up. But you can see here, this is the repeater element. And this is uh, this allows me to basically create the layout for one file and then all the other ones that um, are in this you know file library are gonna automatically appear. So then that way on the back end, when the administrators come in and they add and edit files, they only have to worry about it right here. They don't have to go into Oxygen and make any changes at all. They just come in here and you know they can remove a file all, all together if they want. Um, they can add another row of files. They can add as many, as many as they want. And then all they have to do is just click publish. So on the front end, you saw what that looks like. It's super easy. Um, this is just going to take a little bit of time to lay out. So let's go ahead and walk through exactly what it's going to take to set that up. I have another install over here. So we'll migrate over to this screen. And the first thing we're going to do is start off with our custom fields group. And let's just go ahead and click on add new, call this whatever you want, like document library, something to that effect. And before we actually get started adding the fields, let's change this post type is equal to page and the page is equal to file library. So that's going to make it so this field group only appears when it matches these conditions. And of course, we don't really want our document library to be anywhere else except the file library. Um, so we're also going to change this position to high after title so that our um, location fields show up higher on the page. Go ahead and click on publish here. Um, and then let's go to add field. You can call this whatever you want. Let's just say like files library, something to that effect. The field type, you have to have advanced custom fields pro installed and it's super cheap. So if you don't already have it, just go ahead and buy it. Scroll down to layout and click the repeater element and you'll see a new section here for subfields pop up. So in our example, we had it set up to where the first field is just called file and the field type, you just scroll down and change that to file. The best thing that I found to do is change the return value from file array to file, file URL so you can make that clickable. So if you want to require it, you'd also check that box right there. Um, I'm, I think it probably makes sense to have that be required because you don't want like an empty line and the whole point of the file library is to have files so it makes sense for it to be required. You could set minimum and maximum upload file sizes if you want to do that. You can also set the allowed file types like PDF, DOCX, all that kind of stuff. The other thing that I did was just add a, um, a file name field as well. You can keep that one set to text, require it if you want, and then all this other stuff. Um, you know, there's tons of options here. We're not really going to worry about those. The other one that we said was file description, Oop, description, and then text is fine with that one as well, require it if you want to. And then last but not least, we said it, uh, you know, the last field was file type. Once again, leaving that as text is totally fine. And then just scroll back up to the top and click update. Now, if we go to our page called file library, then what we'll see is that our files library repeater shows up right here. So that's exactly what we want. We'll just start off by adding in a row. You would click on add file, find the file in your media library. Let's just say this PDF. And then you type in your file name, your file description, and the type. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in and then uh, come back to you when it's all done. Okay, so I have all these files added to our file library now. So all we have to do is click Edit with Oxygen and we can actually start setting up our repeater element. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a section to our page here. And then uh, let's go ahead and add in a uh, column element. Let's do this one four wide, so click on 25. And then I like to go ahead and add in some margin underneath this. 15 pixels should be totally fine. And let's just put in the headings of our file library here. So first of all, we can just start with the heading element. Let's um, add a class like heading, oops, heading titles. And then I'm going to change this font size to 25 pixels. And then this is going to be file name. 
And then let's just duplicate this header a couple times. I'm just gonna pop these over here. We have download link and then file description and file type last but not least. Next, let's add in our repeater element, which you can just search for repeater right here. And then what we're gonna do is change the query type to use ACF repeater, files library, and we can click apply query params. You won't quite see anything there just yet. It does see that there are four elements in our repeater at this time, but we haven't actually designed it yet. So let's go ahead and inside of this div here, which is the first line of our repeater, I'm gonna add in a columns element. Again, we'll just go 25% uh, wide for each of those. And then in our file name, we can add in uh, a heading. Again, let's just decrease the font size to maybe like 18 pixels. I'm gonna change the font weight to, I don't know, 400. And then we can just double click this heading, click insert data, repeater field, field name, we can just change the file name, insert, and then it's gonna pop in our file names for us. So there we go. Those are the ones that you saw me input in the back end on the actual file library page. Um, this time for the download link, this is relatively simple. So all you need to do is add in a text link. The actual link content, what you can do is click insert data, repeater field. The field we're gonna to go to the actual just file itself because that's the file URL. Click insert there and then it's going to automatically input the link to the document that we're working with um, in there for you. So then you can change the text of the text link to click here to download, something to that effect, make it really easy to understand. And then for file description, we can just add in a regular text element. Same thing, click on insert data, repeater field, field description, insert. And then last but not least, we can just go to file type. Once again, we'll go to insert data, repeater field, and file type. Then what we can do is let's click on save and just check it out on the front end. And then what you can see is our first grade spelling bee words list is linked properly. So although this is of course just a sample document, if I go to it, it pulls up the document that's applicable to that particular element. So the other thing you could do is actually set the uh, download link to open in a new tab as well. We could do that by coming over here and clicking on set, open link in new tab, add link, and now it's gonna open up in a new tab, which is awesome. Uh, you might actually have to delete this HTTP after you do that, because otherwise I don't think it's gonna work. So click on save. Let's refresh and see if this opens in a new tab. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if this download link isn't working, what you probably missed is in the ACF settings, changing the link here from array to URL will probably fix that for you. And then from here, you don't have to actually come back in here and edit the um, repeater element at all. If you add and remove files, you only have to set this first column up here, and then any changes you make to the actual file library in the back end of WordPress right here are gonna reflect. So just to, just to um, you know, demonstrate this functionality. We're gonna delete this fifth grade PowerPoint here. So if I go ahead and remove the row, I update the page, and then let's go view on the front end. Then what you can see is we only have three documents left. And of course, I didn't touch the back end of Oxygen, which is fantastic. So this is a really simple tutorial on how to set up uh, a file library. Hopefully this is somewhat useful. I would love to see what you guys come up with this. And if this tutorial has been helpful, definitely let me know. If it sparks some ideas, I really love uh, you know your suggestions for future videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon.